Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for the EPNO Youth Initiative Program. This is the second part. Uh, we have some wonderful speakers today. I would like to um, compliment both Saloni and Vikas who have been organizing, organizing this for a couple of years and have been doing a wonderful, wonderful job at it. We are gonna start with uh, Mrs. Indra Palikar and then we are gonna move on to Vishali Mana who is gonna talk about law. So without further ado, um, I am gonna turn over to Saloni who's gonna introduce our first speaker, Saloni. Thank you. So welcome everyone. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. Indira Palikar. Dr. Palikar uh, is a licensed physical therapist and licensed psychologist. She's been practicing as a psychologist for 26 plus years. She's ordained interfaith, interspiritual minister and certified yoga teacher. Her philosophy is that there is wisdom within all of us, regardless of whether we are one or hundred. Her vision is to guide individuals to tap into this wisdom within and find meaning and joy as they learn to untangle and navigate through life's inevitable happenings with grace and resilience. I've known her personally also and professionally for many years, and she has always inspired me. Thank you so much, Indra, Dr. Indra Palikar, for being here. Thank you, Saloni. Thank you, um, Agno, for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate that. Um, and it's great to be talking to young people because I feel like the young people are our future in a way that they have to really make so many tough decisions in the future. And so, and so the more adept we become as far as handling stress, the more adept we become as far as situations that come into our life and we figure out how to handle it, that's really is very, very critical because only when we are sort of calm and at peace, so to speak, that we can make good choices. And it is the choices that we make that make all, makes all the difference in the world as far as the outcome goes, not only the short-term outcome, but also the long-term outcome. So it's really, really important that we recognize that we are under stress when a trigger comes up, and then to really figure out what are we going to do as far as managing the stress and taking us to a different place so our mind becomes clearer. So when we think about what is stress, you know, if you look at the definition of stress, the stress is really something that, you know, get, takes us to a place where we feel very overwhelmed, right? We feel like we cannot cope with the situation. Either we feel like the situation is, the demand of the situation is beyond our capacity or capabilities to handle that. Whether that is true or not, that is how we are feeling. And that sort of sets off this whole cascade of reactions in all of us. And that also sometimes completely paralyzes us, right? So then we talk about the self-empowerment, you know, how do we empower ourselves to move away from self? And once we empower ourselves, that's when we are really in a good place for us to make some good decisions, good choices, not only in the short term, in the short term, but also in the long term. So it's really about we recognizing when we are stressed, what is stressing us, and then to really do whatever we need to do to move to a place of self-empowerment. So we are making good decisions, not only for us, but also for the greater community, if you will. So in, some, in a way, I'm going to start out with a very simple story, but before I tell the story, I do wanna to touch on these three systems that we have within, our, within ourselves, so to speak, within our nervous system, that sort of helps us navigate through the stress and getting to the point of self-empowerment. So the first system is sort of like a threat warning system, if you will, that we are faced with a situation and we feel really overwhelmed. And this threat warning system says, uh-oh, you are in danger, you know, whether it's a tiger chasing us or just some frustration that we are experiencing. But the system definitely is warning us that, okay, you need to do something about it because I have no idea what to do with that. So it is a threat warning system. And the second system that we have is a soothing system that really sort of jumps into action, if you will, or sometimes we can really coax it into action to really to bring us from this heightened alertness stage, if you will, to a much calmer place. Because in the threat warning system, and that system goes into full alert, our mind becomes very, very agitated and we just cannot think clearly at that point in time at all. So we have to really quiet and calm the mind before we can actually figure out what it is that we need to do with the situation. So that is a soothing system that comes into place. And then the third system is sort of, you can say the planning or the resource system 
where you actually, now that your mind is calm and quiet, you can actually figure out, okay, what do I need to do in this situation that's really overwhelming me at this point in time? What are the resources that I need to find? How do I resolve the situation? So the three system really work in tandem. Anytime the threat system is triggered, our system is programmed with the checks and balances that it is going to move us to the soothing system eventually, but we can certainly do a lot of different things to make that transition happen a little bit sooner so we can actually move into the resource system, if you will, where we can figure out how to handle the situation at that point in time. So before I you know, sort of connect all these things, you know, I wanna tell a very short story and a bridged version of the story that will connect what I'm saying right now. So let's imagine there is a traveler who is walking through the jungle, if you will, going from one village to another village in India. And he is walking down and you know, he's been walking all day and the sort of the day is kind of getting, coming close to an end. The sun is not set yet. And as he's walking lost in his own thoughts, he, he thinks he hears a sound behind him. He's not sure. So he just says, no, no, that's probably my imagination. And he continues walking. And after a while he says, yep, I really hear some sound. And it seems like to him, the sound is getting louder. The sound is getting closer. So now he's a little bit worried about what it might be. So his heart starts beating a little bit faster. So he, he's thinking, should I turn and look or should I just keep walking? Maybe I'm just imagining, but his heart is definitely going thump, thump, thump faster, right? So he decides to turn and look and he, he turns and looks at, and there is a tiger walking behind him. So now his heart is really pounding at this point in time and he decides to run. So he tries to run as fast as he can and he can hear the tiger running after him. So this is where his threat system is completely triggered at this point in time, right? He's really running for his life, for the survival because the threat system is all about survival. So he's running, he's not sure where he's gonna go but suddenly he sees a well on the side, on the right side. So he quickly decides he's gonna go and jump into the well just to escape from the tiger. So he takes a turn and he can still hear the tiger coming after him. So he's running even faster. And eventually he just climbs up the wall of the well and jumps into the well, not knowing what's in there, right? So he's in a free fall right now into the well. This, there is a deep cavernous well and he's falling down. He has no idea where he's going to end up. But all of a sudden his fall is being stopped. You know, he suddenly something holds on to him. Something, his clothes get caught in something and he, he sort of slows down, comes to a complete stop and his head bangs against something really hard. So he's experiencing the sharp pain. He has no idea where he is and he's suspended in midair. And as he's suspended, he's in a total state of paralysis almost. He can't even think at this point in time. And suddenly there is this something plop falls on his head and it's very it's very gooey and it's kind of oozing down his face and his first thought in his mind is oh the tiger is looking over the well and it's just you know his saliva is really coming down he's thinking oh it's yuck right but it's dripping down over his face comes down to his lips and instantly he kind of licks it and then he said oh but then suddenly he changes because he realizes that it is very very sweet so he licks some more and he realizes it's honey. And so now he's really enjoying that honey. He's savoring that taste for a moment, forgotten all about where he is, that he's precariously hanging in the well. So he's really enjoying that taste of honey in this incredible environment. So as he's tasting this honey, it just seems like without even he thinking about it, his body kind of relaxes a little bit. His heart slows, heartbeat slows down. His breathing gets a little bit deeper. His whole body relaxes. So this way, without him consciously doing anything at all, the honey has transported him from the threat system to the soothing system, right? Without him doing anything at all. So now he's really relaxed. He's just absolutely enjoying that honey that is still dripping down his face. So as his body relaxes, you know, his mind relaxes, the heart slows down, the breathing becomes deeper. He's suddenly able to see what's in front of him because it's not completely dark yet. So he can see right next to him, a ladder. In fact, when he dropped down, when he fell into the well, that's what his head banged against. And that's what really caused the pain for him. 
he didn't see it before. But now he suddenly sees this ladder and he can see the ladder going all the way up to the top of the well. So he takes a very deep breath and sighs a big sigh and say, okay, now I know how to get out of this well, right? Now his mind is clearer. So now he's thinking, okay, what do I need to do right now? So now the resource and the planning system is coming into place because his mind is so much calmer at this point in time. So he, he thinks of strategies. What can he do? Is, does he want to climb up this ladder right now and get out of the well? Do you think, you know, he thinks mm, maybe I should wait, wait for the tiger to leave. But anyway, he's weighing the pros and cons of what he needs to do to get himself out of this situation. So because he's, his mind is clearer, because his mind is calm, he's able to think of what he needs to do to resolve the situation that he was in. So these three systems really work beautifully when we are faced with any threat. And this happens to all of us. We may not be chased by a tiger, but anything that really creates and triggers our stress reaction, we go through these three systems. And if we don't do anything about it, we are going to eventually get to the soothing system. And eventually we hopefully will get to the pl place where we sort of figure out what we need to do in the stressful situation. But there are several techniques that we can use to really speed up this transition from the threat system to the soothing system to the resource and the planning system. So what are some of these very, very simple techniques? There are many, many, many techniques that's available. So I'm just gonna to touch on very simple techniques. Um, so the first is deep breathing, right? I mean, when, when we start taking deep breaths, it really taps into the parasympathetic nervous system. And that sort of counteracts this arousal of the sympathetic nervous system and calms the system down. So, so one of the very effective breathing technique is the absolutely the abdominal breath, right? So when you look at it from the perspective of yoga, uh, there is a wonderful technique that, you know, if we can practice it along with that abdominal breath, it really becomes very effective. So if you want to try it, you can try it. So you can, you can place the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth and the tip of the tongue is touching the roof of the mouth just behind the front two teeth. So it's not touching your teeth, but it's touching the roof of your mouth. So you would keep the tongue over there and then you would take a deep breath. So you would just take a nice, long, slow belly breath with that tip of the tongue against the roof of your mouth. And then as you breathe out, open your mouth, purse your lips and breathe out through your lips. So you would go And then again, if you, if you moved your tongue, place it again against the roof of your mouth, close your mouth and take a deep breath through your nose and then purse your lips and breathe out. And as you breathe out, your belly is gonna go back towards your spine. So when you take a deep breath then the belly is really puffing out like a balloon. And then when you breathe out, the belly is going back towards your spine. So according to the yoga philosophy, there are a lot of nerve endings on the roof of our mouth and it really is connected. It really helps the mind to quiet down tremendously. In fact, one of the recommendations from the yoga philosophy is that anytime you're not talking, anytime you're not eating or anytime you're not drinking, place the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth. So when you're just, when you're just sitting there doing anything, just place the roof, you know, the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth. So it really, you stay in that balanced state of mind, if you will, and try it out sometimes, see how it works for you. It is a very powerful technique. And the only thing you need to remember about the breathing is you're really going to breathe very slowly. It's not a rapid breathing in and breathing out. You have to breathe slowly. And as you're breathing out, you want to try to make, out, make the out breath, the breathing out a little bit longer than the in breath. So if you're breathing in to a count of four, you wanna slowly start breathing out maybe to a count of six and then go to maybe a count of eight. So you would breathe in, pause for a second, and then you would breathe out, you would pause for a second, and then you would breathe in again. So it's really about slowing the breath. When we slow the breath, the breath becomes deeper and the breath becomes deeper. It really taps into the parasympathetic nervous system and it brings the whole nervous system into a balance and quiets your mind. So the second thing that we all can do is physical movement, right? Anytime you're stressed, anytime you're anxious, frustrated, get moving, you know, start walking. If you, if you jog, if you run, 
go do that because that really discharges a lot of the negative energy and that allows that positive energy to come in as well because when you're exercising, as we all know, it really stimulates the endorphin production. Endorphin is a natural production of the mood elevator and also the anxiety reducer. So physical movement and exercise is another very powerful technique to move from that threat system to the soothing system. The third thing we can do is what the mind-hand coordination, if you will, mind-hand ac activity where you can just draw, you can doodle, you can write in a journal, you can color, you can, you can do anything that you can do with your hand. You can go into the garden, pull some weeds, focusing on your hands. And also one very powerful technique that really soothes our system is writing with your non-dominant hand, which may be very awkward, but in order for you to write with your non-dominant hand, you really have to focus your mind. You really need to bring your attention to that because it is very awkward and it is very uncomfortable. But as you're doing it, it just seems like your whole system really calms down quite a bit. So that is a very powerful technique to do that. So by now with these, even with these few techniques, your mind is probably going to calm down. So at this point in time, <clears throat> to engage that planning and the resource system, you can bring in, begin to bring in the self-talk. So you really want to pay attention to what am I saying to myself at this point in time? That very often, majority of us really beat ourselves down, right? We really get very upset that I'm even frustrated about this, that I shouldn't be frustrated about it. What's wrong with me? Look at this other person. You know, they can just handle whatever comes their way. I can't do it. So we're really talking very, very negatively to ourselves. So really catch, catch yourself. You know, what is it that you're saying at this point in time when you're frustrated? And if you really feel like you notice that you're really doing a lot of this negative talk, uh, one of the acronym to remember at this point in time is STOP, S-D-O-P, which is kind of easy to remember. So the S really stands for stop. So recognize that I'm talking negatively to myself and stop that negative talk. Just tell yourself, stop, stop this negative talk. And the T stands for taking a couple of deep breaths. So this is a good time to practice some of these deep breathing. And then the O is to observe. So as you begin to take deep breaths, your system is going to calm and quiet down. Initially, it may take a while for it to calm down, but as you continue to practice this, it's going to happen sooner and sooner and sooner. So as your mind is quiet and quietened down, you wanna observe, okay, what is the situation? What is this that is in front of me that I'm really trying to fix here? You know, what is causing me so much stress, right? So we're really trying to understand what is the stress sore here and what are the hurdles and what do I need to do? What is my goal? What am I trying to achieve here? And how do I go about doing it? So you, you sort of think about the goal, you think about the plan, you think about the steps you need to take at this point in time. And the P in the stops uh, stands for proceed. So now you have a plan, now you have the steps, now go ahead, implement the plan, do what you need to do. So this is a very good way of uh, really stopping those negative thoughts at this point in time. Sometimes it's even very helpful just to even clap your hand and say, stop. You know, you might need that visual and the auditory cue for, for us to stop that. The other thing that's also very powerful is using our five senses. So you can use aromatherapy. That is something that you, know, that you find very helpful for you to relax. You can listen to music. Uh, you can take some, drink something really cold. You know, if you're really stressed out, you know, get a cold glass of ice water and take slow, small sips and really feel the temperature on your tongue. The cold temperature really quiets the system down. In fact, there is also some recommendation that you could actually take a bowl of water, add a few ice, ice cubes in it and dunk your face in there just for a quick second. And that somehow shocks your system to come out of that stuck place of stress, if you will. Or you could just take a small uh, you know, towel and dip it in cold water and just kind of dab it around your face. And that again, it sort of wakes up your system to come out of that being stuck in the threat system. Um, the other things that we can do is really become very intentional that whatever you're doing, pay attention to what you're doing. Because very often when our mind begins to wander all over the place, that's when we are really not paying attention. And it really takes us to all these places that we really don't want to go, right? It's like going into a rabbit hole, right? So you really want to pay attention to where my mind is at any point in time. 
um, and also to have a structure for the day, right? So I have some structure. I know I have certain responsibilities for the day. So have some structure. So it's not like, you know, ad hoc, you just go and do whatever pops in your mind. Then very often what's important gets, you know, left behind. And then in the end, it really causes a lot of stuff, especially for high school students, college students, or anybody, right? When, when I procrastinate or when I don't pay attention to what needs to be taken care of, then I realize, oops, the deadline is coming up and we absolutely get stressed and the system gets triggered. So really having some organization, prioritization, and really having some structure for the day is very, very, very helpful. And the other thing that I feel is very most important, I would say, is self-care. Self-care meaning making sure you're eating well, you're getting enough sleep, you're drinking enough fluids, and the exercise also comes into this place. Um, and I almost look at self-care as um, a bank account, if you can look at it at a bank account, like an energy or emotional bank account. And this is a bank account which is very unique, which is that you have to make deposits in this account every day. This is not like our regular bank account, right? Where you get a paycheck maybe every couple of weeks or you get deposited and then you keep writing checks, whatever. But in this account, from the moment you wake up in the morning to the time that you go to sleep, you're constantly swiping your debit card or you're writing checks, right? For everything that we do, we are spending that energy, physical energy, emotional energy, psychic energy. So this bank account needs to have deposits put in every day. If you cannot, you know, just say, oh, maybe not today. No, you cannot do that, right? We have to eat every day. We have to drink fluids every day, right? So same way we have to do, take care of that and make deposits. And this is really a very critical point as far as we being able to handle stress. Because one other contributing factor to be feeling stressed is when we don't have energy, right? When we are completely spent. And if one little thing comes up, it is that straw that broke the camel's back, right? One thing comes up and it completely tips us over because we don't have that reserve energy inside of us. So if I am making deposits for myself in the form of self-care every day, there is going to be energy in there. Or maybe there may be, there may not be any energy at some point in time, depending on what's coming your way. But then at least if you know what to do to kind of bounce back, that'll be very, very helpful. So these are very, very simple techniques. And hopefully if you can just even attempt one or two of these and see how it works for you, I think in the long run, it will make a big positive impact and make a big difference. So I will stop now. And if anyone has any questions, I will answer the questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Palakar. These are very insightful thoughts. Uh, on stress and love the story. It kind of connected all the dots and uh, the stop technique, you know, that's so useful. Uh, so we'll wait for some questions. If uh, anybody has questions, they can ask, uh, unmute themselves and ask, or they can also put it in the chat box. Thank you, Dr. Palikar. That was very useful. I was thinking about your comment about trying to write with your left hand because it takes concentration and takes your mind away from stress. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of us have come up with a pandemic hobby, which is something similar to uh, kind of get away from stress during the pandemic. And one of the things I did was cross stitch. And I did ah. cross stitch, which meant I had to count what I was doing, these tiny, tiny, tiny stitches. <laughs> and it really helped. So yes, yes I agree. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. Yes. <clears throat> It's all about creating new neural circuitry, right? That's 